Ian Morris, Why the West Rules, For Now, The Patterns of History, and What They Reveal About the Future. In Why the West Rules, For Now, Ian Morris explores the historical reasons behind the West's ongoing global dominance. Dismissing long-term lock-in and short-term accident theories, Morris delves deeper into biology, sociology, and geography to analyze the fluctuations in Eastern and Western social development. He examines the foundation of high-end states, the role of agriculture, and the effects of geography in shaping the East and West's trajectories over time, taking readers on a journey through thousands of years of history right up to the present day. Looking Beyond Short-Term Accidents and Long-Term Lock-Ins The dominance of the West, a result of biological, sociological, and geographical interplay. The West has an undeniable influence on global politics and development. While various explanations exist, two prominent theories suggest that Western dominance resulted from either historical luck or a critical factor present in the West's foundation. However, long-term lock-in theories based on biological or cultural reasoning do not hold up to scrutiny. For instance, racial genetic superiority arguments fall short since modern humans superseded both Eastern Homo erectus and Western Homo antecessor. Similarly, cave paintings found in Altamira do not indicate Western cultural uniqueness, since the art resulted from the need to stay warm during the Ice Age. As such, Western dominance requires a more profound explanation that accounts for the interplay between biology, sociology, and geography. Consequently, neither short-term accidents nor long-term lock-ins can explain the West's dominance. East versus West, Measuring Social Development The author creates a social development index based on four fundamental characteristics to evaluate the East and West's social development scientifically. The author defines the East as civilizations that developed between the Yellow and Yangtze rivers in China and the West as starting in the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East and Egypt and expanding westward. The factors considered for the Social Development Index are energy capture, urbanism, information processing, and the capacity to wage war. The results show that there is little difference between the East and West's social development, with both scores resembling an exponential curve. The scores rise slowly for thousands of years, and at the beginning of the 18th century, there is a surge in scores due to the Industrial Revolution's full steam operation. The Birth of Civilization Around 11,700 BCE, the Ice Age ended, and humans started to develop more settled communities. Agriculture became the key factor in distinguishing the West from the East. The hilly flanks region, stretching from Iraq to the Mediterranean, became the pioneer of civilization as farming became pervasive. This gave the West an advantage as the cereals and domesticated species that evolved from grasses in the hilly flanks were integral to their survival. Eastern agriculture, primarily centered in China, developed later due to geographical limitations. The Late Bronze Age Collapse and its Impact on Western and Eastern Development over 10,000 years, the West led in development until the Late Bronze Age collapse in 1200 BCE. This left Western civilizations struggling to keep their empires together, while Eastern social development began to catch up. The Western crisis was likely due to the interaction of climate change, famine, state structure disintegration, migration, and even disease between 1200 and 1000 BCE. The West's implosion reduced its lead over the East by six centuries, with the East's social development being only a few hundred years behind the West by 1000 BCE. In the 10th century BCE, both the East and West began restructuring themselves in similar ways, shifting from low-end to high-end states. The West was where the first extensive high-end states emerged, including the Assyrian Empire. The Rise and Fall of High-End States the book discusses the emergence of high-end states, with the Assyrian and Persian empires as western forerunners and the Zhou dynasty in the east as trailblazers. However, the Chinese Han Empire and the Roman Republic dwarfed their predecessors. While the Romans controlled vast coastline portions of the Mediterranean and defeated their North African rival, the Carthaginians, the Han dynasty dominated China and was one of the world's largest empires. 
Despite similarities in both cultures, such as a literate and an agriculture-based elite and extensive trade networks, they eventually disintegrated. The reason for their downfall was mainly attributed to constant invasions from nomadic barbarians and the central administration's breakdown. The Roman Empire split into eastern and western provinces before eventually falling, while the Jin dynasty ruled the southern part of China's former Han Empire, and the northern part broke into five smaller kingdoms in the east. Social Development in the West and East In the first millennium, the Western social development was ahead of the Eastern until the Western half of the Roman Empire began to decline. The Eastern Empire, on the other hand, recovered quickly from the downfall of its early empire and reached a new peak in social development by 1100 CE. The Sui dynasty reunified China's north and south, allowing for a China-wide economic boom, and the medieval warm period increased rainfall in the semi-arid north, leading to greater yields from the fields and a population boom. During this time, Eastern social development finally reached the heights previously achieved by the Roman Empire. In the West, the medieval warm period was also transformative but resulted in the devastation of dry Arab heartlands in Southwest Asia. Trade became concentrated in cities like Muslim Palermo and Cairo, and Christian Venice and Genoa. Cultural exchange followed hot on the heels of trade expansion, leading to the transmission of scholarship and knowledge from the Muslim empires to Christian Europe and ultimately laying the foundation for the Renaissance. The Rise and Fall of Eastern Social Development Marco Polo's travelogue marvelously described China's advanced society during his time in the 14th century. However, by the end of the 13th century, Eastern social development had plummeted due to the Mongol invasions. China's intricate infrastructure collapsed, and destruction, famine, and disease ensued. Meanwhile, the Renaissance in Italy inspired a Western cultural elite and encouraged innovation, leading to Columbus's journey to America in 1492. The West turned oceans into commercial highways and left the East behind. Geographically, the Atlantic route from Europe favored the West more than the Pacific route from China. Despite Western progress, China barely maintained its social development advantage. Western Advancement Between 1500 and 1800, both the East and West experienced social development, but at uneven rates. The West eventually overtook the East in the late 18th century due to the discovery of the New World and the exploitation of its resources, as well as advancements in modern sciences. The steam engine, developed by James Watt, powered the Industrial Revolution in the West and gave rise to steamships, trains, and improved communication. This led to the world becoming smaller and global trade filling coffers in the West. The Industrial Revolution set Western rule in motion, marking a significant turning point in history. Western Dominance Under Threat The 20th century saw the rise of Western dominance despite devastating wars. World War I and II reduced the power of Europe's dynasties, allowing democracy to spread. The West survived WW2 in better shape than the East, allowing for the Cold War's victory. Despite the nuclear standoff, the West prospered until China's economy skyrocketed due to privatization and economic reforms. By 2000, China's share of global production was 14%, while America's remained stagnant at 21%. The question now is, is the end of Western dominance looming? The Future of East versus West the West's current reign will end as the East's economic output catches up, predicted by 2025 to 2027. Other factors such as military, IT, and energy capture suggest parity by 2103, assuming Eastern improvements after 2050. One factor to consider is the possibility of the East becoming Westernized, as globalization continues. However, recent scientific and technological advancements remain largely in the West. The future of climate change, migration, pandemics, and war also remains uncertain but trends suggest the East's development is catching up to the West. As the book summary suggests, the West rules for now, but the tides may be changing. 
Morris projects that the East's social development may overtake the West's by 2103, with China's economic output possibly reaching American levels within a few decades. However, multiple factors like globalization, climate change, migration, and warfare make the future uncertain. One thing is sure, both the East and West continue to evolve and influence each other, and only time will reveal the eventual outcome of this fascinating dynamic between two powerhouse regions.